Good day grade 11s, welcome to this next lesson in week 24. So in this list, this week we've been talking about so far electromagnetic induction and we spoke about how it works and what the direction of the induced current is. But the reason electromagnetic induction works is because of magnetic fields. So today we're going to learn a little bit more about the magnetic field. Welcome. Today, we will focus on the strength of magnetic fields as well as the concept of magnetic flux. Then, we will learn how to calculate magnetic flux. When we bring iron filings close to a bar magnet, a pattern forms around the magnet. This pattern shows not only the shape of the magnetic field, but also its strength. The strength is shown by how close together the field lines. On this image, we can see that the magnetic field is strongest at the ends of the magnet, but weaker in the middle shown. It is very important that you realize that this field is in three dimensions all around the magnet and not only on the plane of the paper. Here we see iron filings that are suspended in a liquid in a transparent rectangular perspex box. A bob magnet is inserted and it aligns the iron filings with the magnetic field. We can see that it gives us an image of the three-dimensional magnetic field lines. The magnetic field lines can be represented on a diagram in three dimensions or in two dimensions as you can see here. Where the lines are very close together or most dense, the magnetic field strength is very strong. The magnetic field strength is indicated with the symbol B. The strength of the magnetic field is also sometimes known as the magnetic flux density, B, and the unit for B is Tesla with the symbol T. In physics, the magnetic flux through a surface is the component of the magnetic field passing through that surface. Here we see the magnetic field lines B that pass through the air. When the magnetic field is at an angle of 90 degrees to the surface A, the magnetic flux is represented by the number of field lines penetrating that area of the surface. Even if the surface area rotates about the magnetic field lines, the magnetic flux does not change. However, the magnetic flux increases when the area increases because more magnetic field lines penetrate that surface area. From this, we can derive a formula for the magnetic flux. Magnetic flux is the product of the perpendicular component of the magnetic field through the area and the size of the area. We can write this in symbol form. The symbol for magnetic field strength is B and area is A. Magnetic flux is represented by the Greek letter phi. The magnetic flux phi is equal to the product of the magnetic field B that is perpendicular to the surface multiplied by area A. The SI unit of magnetic flux is the Weber with the symbol WB. One Weber is equal to one Tesla times meters squared. What if the magnetic field is not perpendicular to the surface area? We can still calculate the magnetic flux, but we need to change the formula. If the magnetic field lines are parallel to the area, as you can see here, no field lines will cut through that area and the magnetic flux is zero. If there is an angle between the magnetic field B and the normal to the area A, then we calculate the component of the magnetic field perpendicular to the area. Let theta be the angle between the magnetic field and the normal to the area. Then the component is equal to the magnetic field B multiplied by cos theta. So the formula changes to this. The magnetic flux phi is equal to the product of the magnetic field B and the area A times cos theta, where theta is the angle between B and the normal of the surface. Let's do an example where we can apply this new equation. Please do this with me and use a calculator so that you can see how to find the answer. A 0.86 meter diameter circular loop 
is oriented perpendicular to a 1,5 Tesla magnetic field, what is the magnetic flux through the loop? It helps to draw a picture of the situation. The next step is to write down the equation and then to substitute the values and calculate the answer. The first thing we do is to find the area of the circle. The formula for that is pi multiplied by the radius squared. We know the diameter of the circle, so we halve it to find the radius. Half of 0 0.86 is 0 0.43. This is squared, then multiplied by the value of pi to get an answer of 0 0.58 square meters. The field is perpendicular to the area, so we use the formula magnetic flux equals the magnetic field multiplied by the area. We substitute the magnetic field of 1,5 Tesla and the area of the circle of 0 0,58 square meters. So the magnetic flux is 0 0,87 Webers. So grade 11s, I hope you now understand what, how important the magnetic field is and especially how important the strength of the magnetic field is. The magnetic flux equation does seem a little bit complicated if you haven't seen it before, but it's actually very simple. I would suggest you go through this video again, make sure that you understand the parts of the equation and can do the question that they've shown in the video, and then go practice the questions in the assessment in the Tune Able system. Have a great day.